Uh, tell you what, just before we hit the news at the top of the hour, I just want to go and get an update on the snow situation and what is happening. Uh, Wales, and particularly South Wales, an area that is expected to suffer the brunt of this. Let's see if it is snowing in Cardiff. Look, Davis, let's go to look. Look, how's it looking? Shema Eamon, yes. Well, it's around ten past five. We did start to see a few flakes here and there, but at the moment it's more of a wet, sleety shower more than snow. It is very cold here still, though, in the Welsh capital. Temperatures around one to uh, two degrees Celsius. Now, it's usually up in the valleys, which tends to get more of the snow, but if it's anything like last year, it could be in for a white couple of days. Now, what has really ruined the chances of, of snow is the rain, which fell around half an hour to about 40 minutes ago, which means the snow is going to have a harder time to to, to stick. The Met Office have issued a yellow weather warning, um, especially for tomorrow morning. Temperatures are set to drop down to minus 3 degrees, which means it could be rather frosty underfoot. So if you haven't managed to get the day off work tomorrow, make sure you take care on the on the road. You see, you're sounding a wee bit disappointed. You're saying the snow's going to find it harder to stick. You might have got the day off work, whatever. Uh, are, you, are you a big kid at heart? I oh massive him mass, and you know and luckily for me I walk to work every day so even if the public transport is working I still have to <laughs> trudge in in my. You love your boots, welly boots on. <laughs> yeah, certainly. Yeah. I Are mean, you going to stay until it snows? Are you going to stay there until you see some proper snow? Oh, of course. I think I'm going to be a stand all, all day, all evening. Yeah, I mean, I can't go home. As a Welshman, we're seeing rain is nothing, and that's all it is at the moment, really, is a bit of um, glorified rain. <laughs> so uh, I'll wait around. OK, well, you stay posted if that glorified rain turns to, to anything else. Get right back to us, Luke. Thanks very much indeed. Look thank as, you. Thank you. Looks a Cardiff TV reporter there, and um, he's saying that the rain's coming down there, so it's not uh, any snow that there is. Uh. Driving home with Eamon Holmes on Talk Radio. Call Eamon now on 0344 499 1000. Calls charged at Providers National Rate. And as we enter into the evening, and it is, uh, you know, we've passed rush hour, um, but rush hour may be going. Uh, not so much in a rush. Wales and parts of the southwest of England, uh, you could see up to 10 centimetres of snow there, uh, could cause disruption. And uh, the, the pressure chart, uh, you can see warm fronts meeting up with cold fronts and uh, a wet front meeting up with a, a dry front, which means snow, really. And um, it's, it's you know, uh, traffic... Uh, just not moving uh, where the snow is coming into. Let's go to Jamie Lowe in uh, Bristol. Jamie, how's it looking in your part of the world? Because that's where uh, a big downfall is predicted. Yes, well, we've heard that it is uh, falling quite fast, just a bit further down the M5 from here in Bristol, but where it's just uh, started to just started to start, start snowing in the last few minutes. If my grandma was with me now, she'd tell me that it's trying to snow. So um, it looks like it's going to be uh, similar to the rest of the southwest very, very soon. But the picture here really in Bristol is one that feels quite switched on. I think people heeded the weather warning that we had earlier on because we, it was an amber weather warning since about 2 o'clock and we had a, an yeah. overcast sky which was threatening um, quite a heavy downpour of snow most of the day. So I think people have taken that warning got onto the road early because I'm standing right now on Station Road in Filton which connects the M32 to the M4 and to parts of North Bristol and the roads are fairly clear. Right now, usually this would be chock-a-block. We are sort of at the tail end of rush hour but it, it could be 10 a.m. on a Sunday morning right now. Yeah, well, people are taking the advice, obviously, Jamie. If you don't have to travel, don't, my friend. Thank you very much indeed for that report from the South West. How is it for you, Jack? Uh, it's not great, amen. <laughs> I'm worried about you. What, um, you, you know, how cold is it? Have you got anything in that car? Have you any food? Are you warm enough? I'm worried about yeah, you using got, your mobile got, phone battery talking to me. Yeah, no, yeah. Luckily, like we've got a charger. We have a 13-week-old puppy in the car, so we're a bit worried about her, but... Oh. Oh yeah. But what what are you saying to me? There's no way of moving. You're what? No, the 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 salt, the, um, the clouds haven't come and the gritters haven't gritted the road and I'm surrounded by about 50 cars and apparently there's about 100 more up the, up the hill behind me that are just completely stuck and no one can move. Luckily, there's some uh, local farmers with their tractors who are trying to do as much as they can, but the more they try to clear it, the, the quicker it's coming down and the road's just so iced underneath the snow that that no one's moving. Okay, so you're getting ready to spend the night? Well, pretty much at the moment. We're 
we're thinking of, about it. Um, we don't really know what else we can do. There's nothing. There's, we're so remote. There's nothing else around. Yeah, I've just seen pictures coming in from the road where you are, and and I see yeah. absolutely the problem uh, of what it is. So, what have you got? Have you got enough clothes? Food. Yeah, look, we're, we're meant to be going away for the weekend. It's my birthday today. So oh, I get out of it. <laughs> no, it's what? my birthday today, so I'm stuck in, the, stuck in the snow in my birthday. And Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. It is Jack Room's birthday, stuck in the snow near Bude in Cornwall. It is his birthday. A one, a two, a one, two, three. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Happy birthday, Jack, Jack Room. Yeah. Stuck in the snow <laughs> in view. What does he do? What does he do? Keep Happy warm. birthday to you. you. And your puppy. Oh, thank yeah. you. Yeah. I think that's made my birthday. Yeah. Um, Luke Davis is a weather reporter in uh, Cardiff. He's in Mary Street. Oh, the amount of times I've walked along Mary Street. Uh, <laughs> sounds to me like Luke's out and about as well. Just I, yes, stay um, away from Splot. At the moment and yes, is, there is some uh, white stuff on the foot. I just left out uh, inside now and I'm outdoors and the, uh, the snow is tipping down. But unfortunately, because of some rain we had earlier on, it's uh, struggling to stick. But there are a few white patches here and there. It's looking a bit more like Narnia than it is uh, Cardiff at the moment, I think. Did you say it was looking more like Narnia? Well... <laughs> what on earth have you been... Have you been in the pub this evening? I can't say too much, my producer will get angry. But no, I've been in the studio working hard, but it's, uh, yeah, it is hard down. Yeah. And um, the temperatures in Moldau are pretty good for snow, between uh, 0 and 1 degrees Celsius, according to the Met Office. So this is perfect temperature for snow. Um, if it's going to continue to stick, though, that's uh, uncertain at the moment. But uh, if it carries on like this, I won't be surprised if we woke up to a... Uh, a white Friday morning in the Welsh capital. Well, you, yeah, you don't get a lot of snow down in South Wales, I know, but uh, you do get some, don't you? We get a few, yeah. Usually the valleys of the Brecon Beacons, mm. they steal all our snow before it gets down to us. So it's um, a bit of a novelty to have it here, to be honest. Yeah. You probably won't, uh, it probably won't get up to the valleys, will it? No, it's going to kind of cut across towards uh, kind of Bristol way mm. more than anything, and over Newport. Yeah. Um, but it's, I, I think of it as getting along back, because usually it comes down from the north, and it, yeah. all the snow vanishes over the valleys before it even gets to us. And because we're quite close to the sea, um, that means that most of the air pressure would have changed the time it gets I to us. I can well. remember, as a child, because my mother came from Rumney, and uh, I spent oh, most right. of my childhood in Puthcall, and I can remember one Christmas being in Puthcall when the snow... Snow? Snow? Snow came down so strong. We could, you could walk along the beach at yes. Rest Bay and it was covered in snow yes. and the sea began to freeze, which was... That quite... was the famous snowstorm of 1924. Shut up. No, oh it's, it's, uh, it's well written. It was not well written 1924. It's dangerous brat. when it all melts though, isn't it? That also can be dangerous when it comes down the valleys. Yeah. Well, yeah, certainly, yeah. If it turns to slush, I mean, tomorrow, I mean, overnight, we're going to be dropping down to maybe minus three or four degrees Celsius. So if it turns to ice, um, which will probably will kind of fragment into ice tomorrow morning, people will have to take care. Oh, gosh, yeah. Road, have, have, you, have you got somebody to cuddle tonight? <laughs> um, I leave that open to interpretation. Let's put it that way. <laughs> what do they do with the livestock? How does it put, put, get put in a... You weren't going to make any aspersions no, about the Welsh no, and sheep, the, the, were you? People don't think about it. People don't think about the animals, do they? <laughs> yeah, they got to think they're about the locked, animals. They're all, they're all locked away tonight, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, one thing you can get in Cardiff, uh, really, you, there's some really good curry houses in Cardiff, so if I was in Cardiff tonight, that's where I'd be heading. Stay I in. think I'm actually going to head over to Chip Alley now to get a nice uh, chicken corn and a half and half. A half and half, I'm not sure if it's a thing... Uh, Half and half, 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 half rice, half chips. That's in Wales, that's a special it. thing. Really? In yeah. Rice and chips. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah that's the, that's their vegetables. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, have it delivered. I mean, it's no, time no, to no, have no, it no. delivered. Yeah. Um, listen, Luke, great talking to you. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, don't get too cold for us. So it's snowing in Cardiff. Wow. Yeah. But, uh, it's not come here yet. It says it's coming, though. I know, it says it's coming. Uh, coming. If you've got snow where you are, call us, 0344-499-1000. Thank you. Talk Radio. The big story of the day on Talk Radio. Be well informed with the Times and the Sunday Times.
Good morning to you. Um, I'm Julia hartley Brew. This is the No Nonsense Breakfast Show on Talk Radio. And joining me this morning, comedian Eric McElroy and divorce lawyer Vanessa Lloyd-Platt. Uh, we are, uh, well, we've struggled here in the snow. There's not that much snow in central London, certainly, but an awful lot of the country is absolutely inundated with snow. We heard that the West Country was going to face a lot. But let's talk to our reporter uh, out in Portishead. Jamie Lowe is in Portishead. It's a commuter town uh, near Bristol and joins us now. Good morning to you, Jamie. Good morning, Julia. It's very wintry and very chilly here. Still quite windy in Portishead. We've had about 10 hours of snow, so it started late last night and it kept going right up until now. Forecasters said it would stop around 7, but I can see it's still coming down now. I'm standing on a bridge that overlooks the Port B100, the only road in and the only road out of Portishead, and also the M5. Both seem to be moving fine right now. Roads are clear. It looks like gritting has done its job. The residential roads, however, are still quite thick with snow because not many cars have attempted to get down there. But it is a cold day in Bristol today. We're expecting a royal visit. The, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, Harry and Meghan, are expected to come a little later on, so I do hope they pack their coats. But in <laughs> and sensible travel, shoes as well, especially for a pregnant woman. <laughs> well, yes. Yeah, so we were not expecting any killer here. I've currently got some winter boots on, the first time that they've made it out of the house so far this year. Uh, but in terms of travel, it's not looking too bad on the roads. On the buses, checks are underway, and uh, we'll get more information later on. But currently, services between Bath and Wells are not happening just of yet. And then we got a few flights cancelled to this morning out of the airport. OK, thank you very much for the update. Poor Jim, no, he's actually standing on a bridge overlooking that main commuter road in the freezing cold. So we send our, our warm, warm hugs to you, Jamie Lowe, uh, there in Portishead. Thank you very much indeed. Well, let's uh, let's go a little bit uh, uh, further afield now to uh, Falmouth in Cornwall, where our reporter John Bett is on the line. Uh, John, now we know that a lot of the West Country has seen a lot of the heaviest snowfall. What's it like where you are? Hi, Julia. Yes, the conditions still aren't great here. In in Falmouth, most of the snow has gone, but in other areas, including Bodmin, there is still widespread chaos. In uh, Callywith College, students were forced to spend the night, and then adults were sleeping in makeshift beds in the Jamaica Inn in Bodmin as well. And a woman who went into labour was forced to give birth as the storm. Oh, goodness. <laughs> God, being born in Asda. Time. There's a place of birth, Asda. That's quite something, isn't it? I mean, again, this is the issue, isn't it? People might be able to get places, but they can't get back uh, from places. I mean, you mentioned Bob Moore. Is it more than 100 vehicles were stranded for several hours? That's true. On the A30, one, one man was travelling down from Bristol to Wadebridge for his, uh, for his 29th birthday, but was forced to spend the night in his car instead of the house that he had booked in Wadebridge. Yeah, so and, it's been uh, pre pretty, pretty, pretty difficult, unpleasant conditions. And of course, uh, we've had the AA, and we've had the, uh, the, the the weathermen and women warning us. You know, we've got to go prepared. If you're going on a journey in, in weather like this, you've got to be prepared. Have warm clothes, have some water, have some snacks with you. Make sure you've got a phone charger and the like, so people actually, if they are stranded, it's not quite such a disaster. That's true. And the, the A30 was actually closed until just after 5 a.m. this morning. Uh, it was eventually announced to be passable again, but icy conditions meant that just minutes later, a car skidded off the road on the A38, uh, closing it again in both directions. I'll bet he was popular. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, do you know, do you I'm assuming it was a man because me, women, I know everyone always criticises female drivers. I've got a funny feeling that women were probably driving a little bit more slowly in those circumstances. Thank you very much indeed, uh, John Bett. Oh, that'll start the tweets off. Uh, let's uh, go now to uh, Cardiff. Cardiff TV's uh, Luke Davies is on the line. Good morning to you, Luke. Good morning, Julia. Good yes, we've had about an inch or so of snow, but it will take some time to thaw, which uh, could cause some trouble later on with the ice. But it actually seems relatively calm here in the Welsh capital. I've seen people out and about in their cars, walking, cycling. I actually just saw a learner driver go past, so I think they're getting the... Uh, yeah, money's worth the <laughs> driver. I tell you what, they're going to pass well in those conditions. I, I was just wondering though whether and we hear this, you know, like uh, up in the West Midlands and 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 the north of the country, Scotland and in Wales. I wonder if you guys are a little bit better when we have a freak weather like this. Well, no, it's not that freakish, but snowy weather because um, us us Londoners, we, we're a little bit a bit pansy about these things, aren't we? We get in a bit of a state if we see one snowflake. You just get on with it. 
Um, well, we're certainly used to the rain, let's put it that way. <laughs> we kind of uh, think of it as glorified rain, let's put it that way. So, uh, yeah, I think we're accustomed to wet weather, but maybe snow, yeah, it's a somewhat alien to us as well, don't you worry. Yeah, I can vouch for the rain. I did my uh, postgraduate diploma in Cardiff University. I think I put my brolly up every day for nine months, I have to say. Uh, but are you expecting it to uh, get any worse there with more uh, more snow coming in? Always the concern, as John Hammond just mentioned from Weather Trending, actually it's about the thaw and then the refreezing and the black eyes. Yes, that, that's exactly it, Julie. That's it. Um, we may potentially have something around lunchtime, but the uh, chances of that are very unlikely. The, the thing you have to watch is the ice underfoot. I understand some uh, schools have closed in Cardiff, uh, mostly because of the ice as opposed to the snow. I know Cardiff Airport has had some issues as well. Um, but yes, it's uh, more the ice rather than the snow at this stage. Luke Davis, well, look, you keep it warm and dry as, it, as the, the snow turns to sleep. Uh, thank you very much indeed for joining us, and also John Bett in Falmouth as well. Much appreciate that. Uh, uh, first up, though, uh, let's get an update on the snow where you are, and let's go to our reporter, Millie Bruce Watt, who's in Cambridge. Good morning to you, Millie. Morning. Good How morning. I'm um, very well. Well, I woke up to some a nice, lovely dose of snow, which seems to have all been washed away by the sleet where I am here in central London. What's it looking like in Cambridge? Yeah, well, Cambridge this morning is blanketed in white. Um, not enough to stop the postman or the city's traffic, but uh, snow flurries are set to continue here. Um, no schools have been closed so far, um, but we've had an icy start, and the bands of clouds, I think, are a hint of more snow to come. Yes. Um, I mean, I said the kids, the kids will be gutted. They've got to go to school. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but in, in terms of uh, the road access, and we've spoken to a number of reporters around the country, so roads were, are moving uh, pretty solidly. It doesn't appear in most parts of the country. I mean, Bodmin had some nightmares over the last 24 hours in Cornwall, but most parts of the country, uh, it seems the roads are still moving. Yeah, that's, that's the same here in Cambridge. The gritters have been out this week. Um, there is a yellow warning in place until midday, um, but so far, uh, very dark layer here. Um, no problem there. Oh, good. Well, that's good to yeah. know. Well, stay warm. Keep wrapped up. Millie Bruce Watt there in Cambridge. Uh, let's go to Nathan Sander. He's in Pudsey in West Yorkshire. Good morning to you, Nathan. Good morning, how are you? You're very well indeed. Well, again, I do think us uh, southern softies can be a little bit uh, overexcitable whenever we see a couple of <laughs> flakes of snow. What's it like in West Yorkshire? I mean, there have been uh, scattered snow showers throughout the night. It's caused some disruption. I mean, um, in certain parts of West Yorkshire, traffic is running slower than normal. Um, but uh, there's not really much major disruption to tell you about so far. Um, critters have been spotted um, throughout the course of the morning. Um, but, yeah, I mean, we've we've been sent photos of a car which ploughed through a wall, a wall along the residential street in Pudsey as well after skidding oh. um, in the snow, which is unfortunate. That's it. You only need one uh, one car to skid off for the road or, or a, a lorry to jackknife on a motorway, and then it can bring everything to a halt. It's what we've been it seeing really elsewhere. <laughs> but, but not too bad where you are. It's, it's not too bad. I mean, um, in terms of um, schools, um, there have been two in Cullingworth and Oxenhoe, which will not open until 10 a.m. today uh, due to the adverse weather conditions. Um, but we haven't uh, seen um, any um, closures as of yet. Um, uh, in terms of um, bus service routes as well, there's a there's a there's a service between Oxenhope and Hebden Bridge which is um, not running this morning due to poor ro poor road conditions. Okay, well, thank you very much for that. Sounds like Britain is keeping calm and carrying on in the best tradition. At least, at least the entire country hasn't come to a halt as a result of uh, snow. Nathan Sandu in uh, West Yorkshire, thank you very much indeed. It's 9:26 now. And let's there's nothing like a weather story to get people out and about. I counted. Would you believe? Six, six, that is, different reporters in Chicago for the BBC uh, reporting in on how cold it was. And all of them produced exactly the same stunt. They pulled a T-shirt out and made it a freeze solid and then started banging it on the side of the fence next to which they were standing. Uh, we've got somebody very similar uh, down in Bristol today. Jamie Lowe is there uh, for Talk Radio. Uh, he's been uh, uh, sent out there to try and find out precisely how bad the weather is. Bristol Airport has had some flights suspended. Jamie, how are you doing? Very good morning to you. All right, thanks. I'm going to disappoint, though. My T-shirt is staying firmly on my body because I am freezing right now <laughs> still on King Street in Bristol. We're currently waiting at an imminent royal visit, but snow really is the big story in the...
in South Wales today. We're still under that yellow weather warning from the Met Office. That's um, still in place until 1pm currently. And I'm a bit surprised, to be honest, because last night the snow was sort of coming down in very thin flurries. But now today it's thick and it's slushy. Yes. So I don't think it's going to cause too many problems on the roads. But of course, there is lots of disruption at the airport. That's going to remain closed until 12pm today. Flight's either cancelled or rerouted to Birmingham. But good news for the kids. They're either here with me on King Street waiting to see Meghan and Harry or they're at home making snowmen because around 360 schools, colleges and universities in Bristol um, are closed, another 500 in South Wales. So lots, lots of closures going on. So lots of time for people to enjoy the snow. Well, indeed. Also, Newquay Airport, Newquay Airport has been uh, closed all morning, but we are expecting that to reopen again shortly. OK, and as far as the actual road closures and things like that down there, is it particularly bad? Because, I mean, here in London, in parts of London, it was quite heavy, the snow, overnight. But, I mean, to close over sort of uh, half the city schools, probably more to do with the fact that the teachers can't get in than it is that the kids can't get there, isn't it? Yeah, I think roads in a cities are doing fine. Like I said, the snow is quite slushy, so once it's hitting, if it's falling on wet ground, it's not lasting very long. Mm. But outer city, in the more rural areas, uh, for example, Wells, the bus, the first bus depot is closed there. So, yeah, it probably is more to do with that. I was in Portishead this morning, a commuter town, and there, there wasn't too much snowfall there, but yet the, the streets in the very early morning were full of kids who were loving the news that they were off school. Um, because this, they just simply weren't open. I logged on to the council website at about 7 a.m. and I counted 33 closed. Within about an hour and a half's time, that had multiplied yeah. several times over. So the schools have acted fast um, to get their kids off and out having fun, I, th I think. Bit of an unfortunate day for the royals to uh, decide to drive around, isn't it? Well, yeah, there was a lot of questions whether it is still going to go ahead because, of course, Meghan is pregnant. Um, we are on a cobbled street here in King Street, which has been gritted heavily, let me assure you. But, yes, the Bristol Old Vic tweeted around an hour ago to say that the royal visit is still expected to go ahead. We're expecting them around 10 past 11, sort of quarter past time, but people are gathering here. The crowds are smaller than I would have expected, probably due to the snow. So the people who were planning to come from outside of the city um, they probably have had to cancel their plans but we have been speaking to a fair few university students who have had their lectures cancelled today so they've thought uh, that they could come on down and have a glimpse at the Royals. Absolutely, Jamie thank you very much indeed, Jamie Lowe, a TV reporter there uh, down in Bristol uh, for Talk Radio, uh, waiting for the Royals uh, Harry and Meghan to show up uh, on what is a rather cold day down there in Bristol Bristol Airport, the flights have been cancelled and suspended until at least midday you heard him say Newquay Airport, I don't even know they had an airport in Newquay, uh, isn't operational.